All right, this video is going to give you a, an introduction into Lab 2, our robot research presentation. We essentially are going to be choosing a robot to research and learning more about it and how it works, and then also looking at its influence either locally within a certain company um, or even across the world. You're definitely going to want to take a look at your documents that are listed here. Uh, we have the assignment document, which you will be taking your notes in, and then you will be making sure to submit that in Canvas. I have two example presentations that we will look at later once we have our research finished, but those are always here to be able to go back. And they show a basically a good example and then one that is not as good as far as how it is laid out. Okay, Your Presentation is going to be graded using this rubric below, making sure all of the content areas are included. So all 11, you're going to research them, take notes on them, and then make sure to put them into the presentation. You're going to have 30 points that are going to be about how it is organized. So use it, making sure that words are spelled correctly. We have no grammar errors. Um, also making sure that things are organized in a way that is clear to view uh, for your audience, making sure your notes are submitted, and then making sure you do submit it on time. So let's take a look at the assignment document so that we can see what it is you're going to be researching. Okay. So I've given lots of different robot choices here in the beginning. If you choose to go outside of this list, you have to make sure that you're able to answer all of the questions listed below on your chosen robot. Okay? So we typically do not want to include ones that are from a cartoon or a movie, especially if they are not real, uh, because you're not going to be able to get all of the information that you need. Okay? So what do we need to make sure to include? Again, this is your note-taking form. It does not have to be in perfect sentences. We can bullet point, short thoughts. But as you find websites, make sure that you do bookmark them. Uh, we'll leave them in your bookmarks for about a week so that we can make sure to go back in and use those on our resource page at the end of your presentation. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to be answering what task your robot performs. So we need to know what it does. Make sure you explain that. If it has multiple things it can do, you're going to be explaining all of those or listing all of those. Does your robot have a function similar to a human? So can it replace a human job or something a human might need to do or not be able to do for themselves? Where is your robot used? Make sure you're very specific here. What country is it used in? If it's here in the United States, is it used only in a specific state? If it's used by a specific company, list that company. If it's used by many different companies, but within a certain industry, like maybe the automotive industry, then make sure you list what type of company would be using that. We're going to be looking at your robot's work envelope. So we want to know how flexible it is. That's what we're looking at here. Does it have joints or bendable locations? You can sometimes find it listed as to how many um, joints it does have. Other times you might have to estimate by taking a rough count while looking at different pictures or videos of your given robot. Okay. We need to know if the robot is multifunctional. So can it do more than one task? And if it can, what are those? If a robot can pick an object up and put it down, that is actually considered one task because up and down would be in the same direction area. If it can pick the object up, rotate it before putting it down, then that would be considered two tasks. Okay? If your robot can pick something up, move it across the room, rotate it, and also read what's on the package, then that's where we're going to get into, you know, possibly four or more tasks. Again, just make sure you list all of the things that your robot is able to do. How is the robot taught to perform its task? On this, you're going to be making sure to see if you can find the program that is used to code your robot. Um, some of them do have different controls and sensors where they can pick up or respond based to its surroundings. However, that 
has some coding behind it. So we're not just able to pick a remote up, any remote, and direct the robot to do something. There has to be a, some coding to allow that remote to send something to the robot for it to respond to. So try to look for what program your robot is taught with, okay? Sensors, these are a big one. We need to know any and all of their sensors. So they could be light, humidity, temperature, sound, if it can take video or pictures, that's gonna be others. Uh, but make a list of all of the different sensors it has. Looking at advantages and disadvantages of using that robot to complete a task. Notice that it is plural, so I don't want a singular advantage and one uh, disadvantage. Make sure you're listing more than one. Then we're looking at the impact. So if all of a sudden that robot were occurring in your daily life or all of a sudden it was there every day at a certain store, what would that impact be? Is it gonna take human jobs away? Could it break? Could it cause harm? Could it speed a process up and make things faster? So make sure when you're looking at the impact um, that we're looking at all sides of that. So things that are positive impacts, things that could be possible negative impacts. What types of jobs and careers could that provide? So think about it all the way from the beginning, the people who are doing the assembly, people who are doing the program, through to the people who are going to be advertising and marketing and selling that, uh, possibly into the areas of people that are technicians that come out and fix the robot should there be problems. Then you're gonna take a look and see how you would alter it. So this is not an optional question. You are going to try to predict um, or make your own assumptions as to how this robot could be altered to perform more or different tasks in the future. So I need to know at least one change that you would make to that robot uh, to basically make it better or meet your needs. Last one is not necessarily where you need to fill something in on the document, but you should be including sketches and pictures um, or video of your robot performing tasks throughout your presentation. We want to make sure that your presentation is well-rounded, not just containing all paragraphs. We want to make sure to uh, show some variety in how the information is shown to your audience so that it keeps them interested, um, also gives them a visual, which is where those pictures or sketches are going to come in, so that while you would be presenting the information possibly to them, they could have a, an image to look at um, that goes along with what you're talking about. Okay. Pay attention to Canvas. Uh, Canvas will lay out what is due when, uh, and so the expectations for what you should be completing on each day during this project, because we will be splitting it up over multiple days.